Hello, everybody. How are you? It is so good to see you here this week. Oh, I'm looking at everything y'all are doing and saying. It is so good to see you. Ah, so how has your week been? I hope it's been good. Let's see all who's here. Need to put... Well, I need to clean my glasses first. Do you know how many times I've cleaned these glasses today? I must have been a messy girl. Okay. All right. Let's see. And just so you know, I buy multiple packs of cheap reading glasses. I don't get them from the eye doctor because I'm terrible. I'm so hard on things. So here we go. Hello. Oh, Susan's been busy. I bet you have, sweetie. So Susan is here. Polly's here. Hello, darling. Marsha. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, Sonia. Hi, beautiful lady. Pat is here. This is so cool. I love this. It's all very um, bright. And I've got a new computer now, finally, so I can see things better. This is great. Okay. So it is so good to see all of you. Oh, Cheryl Lemon is here. Hello, darling. And I got some good pictures to show you today. And I still, I said, so, well, let me finish. Let me finish. I, I'm so flighty, aren't I? Linda is here, Jody. Hi, sweetheart. I love your Frankie. So, oh, it, Michelle is here. Hi. Oh, Inger's back. Hi, Inger. I need to learn a word in your native language so that I can say hello to you. I'm going to work on that. I wonder if these, no, these aren't my glasses. Okay. All right. Oh, hi, Alberta Powell. It is so nice to see you. Wow, Pat, everybody, this is great. Hi, Miss Nikki, you sweetheart. So I am tickled. Oh, Deborah Donnell is here. Deborah Donnell, I... I'm going to write you an email um, later this evening. I have been so crazy trying to get the new computer set up, but I am going to remember I said I was going uh, I was going to give you my um, text number, and so I'll write you an email. I want to keep up with you. You're going through an awful lot right now, so it is so good to see all of you. Okay. So this week, I did get the new computer. It came in Thursday afternoon, just a couple of hours before our Thursday art quilt, which I don't know about you, but I'm having so much fun with the, 30, with the art quilt Thursdays. So um, I, I look forward to this next week, what we're going to get accomplished now. So we're just taking it. We're taking it step by step because so many people said they were going to give it a try. And I, I want you to feel confident, and I want to show you the fun of it. So it's, it's, it's going really well. So anyway, it is so good. Oh, you're drugged up, Deborah. Oh, well, I will send you an email today, you poor thing. It's awful when you're in pain, and I wish there was something I could do to make you feel better. Please tell your husband thank you for us. Because it's awful sweet of him trying to take care of the house and, and making the dinners. So, golly day. That's, just be careful. You love my necklace? That was that new set of beads that I had. And I'm really pleased with how it came out. I've pinned it in place because I think I need to make it a touch longer. So I pinned it to my blouse so it would because it was always going underneath my blouse really tickled about this so uh, next time I'll have to show it to you closer but I put a brushed gold a matte gold bead a little one and then each of the stones that match these so I really like it but thank you for noticing okay so I've got this new computer I really like it this time, three years ago, I got a new computer, and it was so hard to switch everything over. This time, it was a piece of cake. So technology is getting better and better. 
I still have a few things like my Adobe Photoshop photo and vid video editing program to get switched over. But that that one might be a little tougher. I got my EQ8 switched over. Um, you get three chances to install it in a computer. And so we had to go out and get my laptop two laptops ago. So I had all three of my laptops out at once because we had to cancel the EQ on the oldest laptop. And that way I would have an opening to put it on my new one because I've got to have my EQ8. I, I love designing things. I don't use it as much as I wish I did, but anytime I design a quilt or block, I do it there so I can get the right size. I can test the fabrics before I put scissors to them. So anyway, so it is so, so good. Oh, thank you, Miss Nikki. I, I'm having fun making jewelry, but this week I didn't get anything made because I've been so crazy busy with this computer. It takes a lot. Like I started to email Deborah Dunnell last night and went, oh, I don't have my contacts on the new, I, I somehow thought that Outlook would automatically, no, it didn't. It didn't populate my calendar or my contacts. So each time I have to do something like it, oh, you'll love EQ8, Jody. Um, it is more intuitive because I, I, I have a hard time. I had a hard time on EQ6 because it wasn't intuitive at all. EQ8 is much better. So just thought I'd tell you, if you get a chance to buy it somewhere or used or something, I would step up to that. But, um, oh, oh, sweetheart. Honey, I'm so sorry, Michelle, about your friend testing positive. Oh, gosh. Yes, Susan, I did import them. We had to, everything I have to do to get new stuff on the computer, I have to go and look up. How do you do this? Do a search for it. And then it was crazy. So anyway, oh, look at Nikki. Susan, do you see how well you have trained her? She's reminding everybody to do the thumbs up because I really do appreciate that. So we put my lights in a new place, and I want to see if they work better today. Today, we're going to talk about, so I don't have to look away from you. Here we go. Because I every week, I put my agenda on this. I love this thing. This is what they call a copy holder. I got it from Walmart online and got it years ago, maybe 10 years ago. It was like $7, the best money I ever spent has really strong magnets, so it sits and holds your pattern, whatever you're looking at. So I know, is it, is it Nikki something? Susan, you have trained her so well. I told Susan, I don't know if all of you know, but Nikki is Susan's daughter, and she's delightful. I mean, absolutely delightful. So we are, we're really happy to have both of them. So anyway, all right, so I told, so I'm, I'm just going to look at here and tell you. So I'm going to talk to you a little more about our going back to Art Quilt Thursdays. Then today we're going to talk about favorite tools. So be thinking about what are your favorite notions and, and tools. And I've got a few of mine I gathered up. And I'm going to ask you, not now, but in a moment, uh, <laughs> Um, I'm going to ask you to list your favorite tools. Then I'm going to show you what I'm doing to my quilt that I'm going to enter in. I have to have it done by Tuesday. So I've been working on it a lot, but I've got, I'm going to be working on it right up until the last moment. So I took out a, half of my um, quilting because I want it right. And when you're going to enter something in a show, you want it the best you can do. All right, we're going to work on our Valentine uh, table round. I don't know what to call it. It's not a runner because it's round. So that's why I just said table round. Someone asked me, I think Nikki said, what is that pink fluffy stuff 
on the green stand or the blue stand or whatever color you want to call it. That is the, the all of the embellishments that I use to make um, my quilt that I'm going to enter into the show. And so, you know, I never quite finished. I didn't put all the, the feathering and the, the tool and all of that table topper. There you Susan, where were you last night at 1 a.m. when I was writing this up? <laughs> so anyway, but that didn't answer your question, Nikki. That's all my that's all my pink fluff for to finish the quilt. So I can't wait to show you. I've done a lot of work on the table round, and there might be a little contest involved. And then I think I think that's it. For today i had a couple other suggestions down here but like i've had time <laughs> so anyway um all right and here is here is the printout of what i need to do to enter this is i'm going to enter it in the mid-atlantic quilt show which is sponsored by mancuso and um, so just go type on your, if you are interested in taking classes there or because I'm taking a class too. I forgot to tell you that the classes I, when it first came out, I went on and I put a couple classes I was interested in. The one I really wanted to take is now full. I waited too long. So I am taking though an in very interesting class. And I can't wait to tell you all about it. And um, But I did, Mark said, Deb, sign up for a class. Because I thought, well, I just got this computer and everything. But he knows that for me to continue teaching and sharing with y'all, I need to keep learning. Because a teacher who stops learning is a very dull teacher. So I'm very excited. I'm going to take a class. And I think it's an all-day class. I'm just taking one. But I looked up the teacher I really wanted to take the class from because it was going to be really in-depth thread painting, which, you know, I'm really fascinated with. Her classes, all three of her classes, whoosh, I mean, they sold out fast. So a lot of you are having the same questions. How do I do thread painting? So what I did is I looked her up on the Internet. And I know I should have her name right now, and it's just not in my brain. So next week, I will tell you all about the class I'm going to take, and I'll tell you about this teacher who I wanted to take from so that you can also be on the lookout for her. Because what I did is I signed up for her newsletters. I've been to her site, and she'll list when she's going to be teaching and where. So that's always good. Now, another person who does a lot of thread painting, I've already taken her class, was Joyce Hughes. And I think she still had some opening at the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Show. And yes, we can't actually, there's no quilt show to go to. It's all going to be online. So you can stay in the safety and the warmth of your own home and still take the class. So if you have a laptop or I guess you could even use your smartphone, you can take the class too. So be looking for it, and, uh, and let's support these quilt shows that are trying to stay alive by doing virtual quilt shows. So anyway, but I printed out the information that I need to enter my quilt, and um, I've got to take some really good photographs, so don't wait till the last minute. The best photographs are taken outdoors, not in direct sun. So a slightly cloudy day or a sunny day where you're not in, the sun is not hitting you or the camera or the item you're taking a picture of. Because the direct sun will cause the camera to react in a way it just fades it out. And if you take them inside, it's hard to get the details. And they want details. In fact, they want a full view of the front. They want a detailed view of the front. They want a second detail view of the front, and then they want a large section detail of the back. That's why I took out my quilting, because I had a few little problems on the back. 
So anyway, um, but I, I love sharing this with you. You've got to put the size of your quilt. You've got to measure it and stuff. But this is the easiest way to enter a quilt in a quilt show. Normally, you have to send pictures. And then if they're interested, you have to send the quilt in. Luckily, we don't have to send it in. It is going to be virtual. So I'm very, very excited. It's a way I don't feel I don't have to leave the house to go to a shipping company or the post office. And I'm excited. So uh, if any of, of you all are going to try to enter, we can sit and hold our fingers, cross our fingers together. So anyway, so I just thought I would show you that. In fact, um, let me, here is Mancuso Show Management. Hi, Vicki Robles. Robin is back. Hi, Robin. This is great. Okay, so just thought I would show you. It's so funny. Because five years ago, I said, I'm, I'm never going to enter a quilt and show. Never, never. And then, kind of, I, I, I entered them in, my, in little competitions close by, little like guild or, or shop competitions. And I kind of realized I needed a bigger stage. And so now I'm doing it. So you, you, it's, it's normal to feel afraid at first, but what's the worst they can do? And when I got my crit critiques, they were so fair and they were right. And so, and I can learn from that. And that's a good thing. So it is so good to see you. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. So Susan just put the link to the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Show. And I appreciate it very much. In fact, the teacher that I, I wanted to take from, I, don't, I didn't see her name still up on the show because her classes, they all became full so fast. And I think when they get such a huge waiting list and the class is full, because I couldn't even find her. And I had to go back and go, what, what was that class? And that's how I found her. But I will share all of that with you next Sunday. Okay. I'll share it all with you next Sunday. All right. Well, while we're talking about that, I'll show you. And this is the quilt that I'm going to enter in the show. And I'll show you how I took off all of the quilting. This, you know, except just what's around the bird. I also took off a lot of stitching on the front near the birds because I was in such a hurry. I never thought I was going to enter this in a show. I just made it on our Art Quilt Thursdays. And most of the time I was coming down here Thursday morning going, I've got to get something done on this. So I did it so fast that I ended up taking a lot of the outline stitching out and redoing it. And I came in with some more thread painting on the feet, giving a little more detail. I did some edge quilting around each of the birds. So I still have to fluff out their bodies, put some more stuff on their bodies. And I need to make inside this doorway darker. So I'll do some ink tents painting on that. But it looks a little bit sharper because I came along and I redid outlines on stuff. I used some woolly nylon to give shadows because it's a softer woolly nylon thread makes it softer. So I have been having to work a lot on this because I thought it looked great as long as it was just fun between you and I. But then when I thought, oops, no, I have to do better. So that's what I'll be working on. Soon as I'm done with today's show, everything stops in my life except that because I have to have it photographed and ready to go Tuesday. Tuesday is the deadline. So that's February 2nd is the deadline. Oh, thank you, Inger. They were so much fun. We had a little challenge here on our Art Quilt Thursdays, and we said, okay, now we're going to do an Art Quilt with birds. 
And I, I love pink flamingos. I have them everywhere. In fact, I even have this cute pin with pink flamingos. It, so I kind of, my, Miss Bonnie, I think, sent me that. So I love pink flamingos, and uh, which is funny because pink was not my favorite color, but I have a few pink flamingos. <laughs> so anyway, uh, and yeah, has Robin feeling better? Gosh, I hope so. All right, so that's what I'm working on, and that's what this basket is full of, and I have a, a package here with some things so that I can continue to accessorize and get that quilt in top condition before I take the photos. All right. Now, let's talk about, uh, you don't want me to sing from the sound of music, but let's talk about our favorite things, okay? Let me grab them. I'll be right back but um i was talking to mark about my favorite things and uh matt gave me the idea because sometimes when i'm sitting there i don't know about y'all but i get so grateful as i age because i realize how lucky i am to have the things that i have you know, when we're trying to raise children or we're younger in life, we need so much. And crafts and quilting and sewing is mostly a must do, must only what you have to have. And um, it is so nice when you get to the stage that. It's things you want. You can have things you've wanted to have. So, I'm going to be thinking about what is your favorite thing. I'm going to show you mine. Then I'm going to ask you for your favorite things. You know I've talked about this a bunch. But one of my favorite, favorite things is Taylor's Chalk. It is so easy to mark on fabric. It's inexpensive, and I love it. Jenny Byer taught me about Taylor's Chalk. So this one's the best, or by Clover. And this was about $2.25. And if you take care of it, it'll last a long time. You can even buy sharpeners to help keep a knife edge. Then... One of my favorite things is I made this myself. I bought this little holder that came with a tiny little seam ripper. And I put it on a piece of wood and then I painted it. And, um, but this is wonderful. This is for when I'm doing chain piecing. And what I do is I take the seam ripper. I turn it upside down, then it sits firmly on the table, and I take my pieces, and I cut the threads in between all my chain piece items. So this is one of my favorite things. All right. My snips, and I have these in two sizes. I love Fiskars. And I love these. I have arthritis in my hands. And so I get fatigued. I also had carpal tunnel surgery about eight years ago. And it worked very well. And so if you ever have, if somebody ever says, hey, you know, you, you should have carpal tunnel surgery, please do it. I waited longer than I should have. And you will lose muscle um, in your hand that you'll never get back. So don't wait too long. But I love these snips. Makes it so easy because for one thing, I have big hands, girls. <laughs> and trying to put my fingers in scissors is maddening because I have, see, I have big hands and trying to get 
my fingers in and then get them off. It's a lot of trouble. Every time I have to try to pick up scissors, it's not, it doesn't work. So what I like are these snips. They've got the spring action. So all you have to do is use energy to close them. Use your hands only to close them. Also, you can pick them up. Just so easy because you don't have to put your fingers in any hole. So these I love. And then I like the bigger, the bigger version too. But Fiskars makes the best and they have the nice comfort grip handles that are easy to hold on to. But see this and see this only has, you only have to put fingers in there and it's big enough to put your whole hand. So I dearly love these. All right. One of my favorite things is my Lumiere by Jacquard. And this year, these were my favorite go-to paints. They're metallic, and I love the Exciter kits because I don't use them in large amounts. I just use them a lot, and it's much cheaper for me to get the Exciter kits. These run about $14, $15 on Amazon, and I, you, you can use them to color on fabric, on gourds, on leather, you can, um, and I used them on the plastic, clear plastic ornaments. I used them on the inside, and they were beautiful. So I really, really do love this. They said tile, canvas, silk. Very, very neat. All right. While we're on the paint and embellishment, Ink tents pencils. I dearly love these ink tents. They're made by Derwent. They're made in England. And I'm going to tell you, they're expensive. So you probably have to do what I did. I put them on the list for Santa to get them for me. But these are actual ink. Fabric ink. And... You color them like you do with a regular colored pencil. But when you put water or medium to them with a brush, they bloom with color. And it, then you heat set it, and it's permanent. So I love these. The 24-pack is fine with me. They have larger packs. They have smaller packs. And it's fine to get the smaller packs if you just want to try it. But if you want to use ink tints, I would recommend the 24-pack. It gives you enough colors and tints so that you can mix and match and you know you can get what you want. Okay. Then, now, this I'm going to use as a generic book. But what I'm going to tell you is if you do long arm quilting, if you do long arm quilting, Having books with long arm quilting right there by your frame are invaluable. There's a new one I want, but I haven't, you know, it's like $23. So I haven't yet decided I'm ready to spend that, but I will, maybe for my birthday. But anyway, this is a particularly um, wonderful book. It's by Amanda Murphy. And the reason I like it, idea book is it will give you, it gives you samples of what to quilt if you have a block, what to quilt if you have a border, what to quilt if you have a star, so on and so on. And I have little bookmarks. And the reason I like this so much is because depending on what I have to quilt, it will give you examples of what would look good in that space. Okay? But I keep these books and any of the quilting pattern books, keep by your frame or your domestic machine, wherever you quilt. Because sometimes we, we have this quilt we want to quilt and then we just go blank. And something like this will really, really help you. So that's one of my favorite things. Then I... Now, 
thread is a very personal preference. But when I learned this from Leah Day, and she uses Issachord. Okay? Whoops. Come on, Issachord. Focus it. There it comes. Okay. She, oh, hi, Betty Middleton. Welcome back, sweetie. So, I love Issacourt for my um, frame machine. I, mine stitches 1,500 stitches a minute, and I just found I was breaking a lot of threads. This one is a real strong, tough, it's made in Germany. And I love it. And on Amazon, I can get a spool. This is what, 5,000 meters? Five or I think 5,000 meters. Come on, focus. And yeah, 5,000 meters. And I can get this for 10 to $11. That's important for me. And, you know, I've told you when you're on a limited budget, I can't afford. Fancier and these come it, it quilts beautifully. It's a little bit thin. I like it. It's not too obtrusive doesn't look bulky, but for me my machine likes this. Okay Then So be thinking guys Yes, German German products are superior Okay I've had this a while, but I've just started making myself use it. And I've used it for taking stitches out of this quilt that I want to enter into a show. What I like is the scissor blades are upwards slanting. That's really good when you're trying, which I keep it normally at my frame, my sewing frame. And what's good about this is good for embroidery or cutting stitches close to fabric where you don't want to accidentally cut the fabric. Okay, see how they slant up? And let me, these, I don't see a name on these, but you can find these everywhere. And I like it that they have a stop so you don't pinch yourself because I hate when I pinch the inside of my hand when I'm you know, but you squeeze this and it closes the scissors. I found these are very good. You have to be careful, though. They're extremely sharp. It's not something you want to use if the dogs are trying to crowd up by you or whatever. But these are really nice. So that's my new favorite thing. I've had them for a while. I finally started using them, and I love them. So, again, it has the action where you only have to push one way. All righty. Then, as you know, my favorite rotary, rotary cutter is Martelli. And the reason that I love Martelli so much is it's ergonomic. I have a bad back, and cutting standing up just triggers my back. With this ergonomic, and I got this first before I had my carpal tunnel surgery because it keeps your hand in line when you're cutting. So the old fashioned cutters put a lot of strain on my wrist, but this, you keep your arm and hand straight while you're using it. And I'm left-handed, so that's why it has the blue handle. You can get them right-handed, but I love this thing. And the new ones they have, when I first got my first one about 10 years ago, they weren't as well built as these. These new ones, oh my gosh, they're such workhorses. Martelli tools are not cheap, but they last a lifetime. So I have one of these upstairs, one of these downstairs. If you don't get them on sale, they run about $24. But I have gotten them on sale as low as $14. You just have to look sometimes connecting threads. Certain stores may offer them on sale, but it's really well built. And because it's so ergonomic, I don't have to stand up to cut. I can get enough leverage sitting down, which saves my back. So that's another one of my very favorite things. 
Mark bought me my first one because I saw it in a store. And at that time, it was like $19. And he said, you need this. Oh, my gosh. Changed my life. Changed my life. Okay. So, and remember, when I started out, there was no such thing as rotary cutters. <laughs> so, okay. Now, I want to talk about fusibles because fusibles are some of my favorite things. Let me tell you. Oh, Susan, you're such a dear heart. I love fusible interfacing. This is a Pellon package, but I, I, I love Pellon the best, but there's all kinds of fusible interfacing. And the price per yard, very important to me. But then, so far as just fusibles that aren't fusible interfacing, I'm crazy about a lot. Here's heat and bond light. And I love how heavy the paper is. It's wonderful. You can take and cut this carefully and put it through a printer. That's wonderful if you have certain shapes to print out. Instead of you having to put it, use a light box or a window and, and try to trace it. But heat and bond, there are so many good products. Now, my favorite go-to, my favorite... Uh-oh, Deborah, you take it easy, honey. I'm so sorry. I, I will send you that email, hon. My favorite go-to fusible is Steamacine 2. I like it in these sheets. I like it for a couple reasons. In fact, I put some more on my Amazon list. I like that it has the grid pattern. Makes it real easy. To, to draw something, a shape you need, or to line it up. But also, it is stiff enough that you could get it to go through the printer. It has protective paper on each side. You can also use the protective paper as an ironing sheet. So if you don't have one of those expensive silicone or Teflon ironing sheets, save these once you take the papers off, and you can use those as an ironing or pressure sheet. So, but I love this. I love the size. I can pull this out, draw something on it, cut it out, and use it without having to pull a big roll out. Now, it's more expensive this way, but there is something to be said for convenience. So, this is my probably my all time favorite. The other reason I'm so crazy about Steam Machine 2 is it has a sticky side. So you can cut out your fusibles and you can practice laying them on the quilt to see where exactly what you want your placement to be. And that's wonderful because once you've ironed it down, too late then. <laughs> so this is my all time favorite steam machine. Makes my life easy. Talking about fusibles, Bow Nash, Fuse it powder. There's different kinds of fusible powders out powders out there, but I got this. I found this the cheapest, right around ten or eleven dollars. No, maybe it wasn't even ten dollars. And I found this on Amazon. We're going to be doing some confetti um, work in our next art quilt. This one we're working on now. I'm going to for the far away meadow. I'm going to cut up fabric into little confetti bits and drop a few colors in to look like um, wildflowers because I'm going to do hand embroidery on the part real close it shows, but I don't want to do hand embroidery in the distance. So in this, what I'll do is I'll cut up all my confetti and put it, I like to use a paint palette, something with individual space, holes or spaces. And I put my confettis, and that's just fabric that I've used my rotary cutter to cut into tiny pieces. And I separate the colors into the little, like an ice cube tray you could use, anything that has little compartments. And then what I will do is I'll sprinkle just a touch of this where I want to drop on the confetti. Drop the confetti till it covers it pretty good. Use a pressing sheet, like maybe a sheet off of there, or unless you have a silicone or Teflon pressing sheet, lay on top and press. And this powder will fuse those confetti pieces together. So this is called Bow Nash Fuse It Powder. Be careful though, 
don't inhale it. <laughs> don't inhale it. So I'll be wearing one of my COVID masks when I work with this. But anyway, and this once it's fused, it can be washed or dried or dry cleaned. And it stays soft so you can easily sew, do your quilting over the confetti pieces. So that's another one of my favorites. I only have two favorites left to share with you now. I could find tons more, but I'll stop at this point. We'll have another favorites later. I wanted, you can see how much I use it, a white or gum eraser, okay? White or gum. I use this thing so much because if you use a red or blue pen, regular pencil arrangement, eraser on your fabric it will stain it those erasers are dyed so try to use a gum or a white okay start typing in what your favorite things are because i've only got one thing to show you and then i'm going to read off what your favorite things are the other favorite things when this came out i said ah oh, it's just something else they want you to spend your money on I was wrong. <laughs> I was very wrong. These wool pressing sheets, I have one this size and I have a nice like 12 by 18. They are fabulous. I don't, I know Susan can't have them because she's allergic to wool. I don't like the smell of steamed wool, but guess what? This thing is worth it. It, when I press my blocks on here, it makes them so flat. I think because the wool does a, such a good job of absorbing the heat and moisture, and it can kind of radiate it back to the fabric. But man, it presses things so flat. So I'm a huge, huge fan. And the prices have come down a lot. Do check ratings, though, because in the beginning, they had people making these out of dirty wool and the smell was quite a mess if it's made by a good company they will have treated or, or cleaned the wool and then they felt it and they don't put a ton of chemicals on it because that that smell would bother you but i love this and make sure you keep it where moths won't chew on it so although i haven't had a problem i haven't noticed it but i look you know just in case so now, those are a few of my favorite things. Now I can't wait for you to share some of your favorite things. All right. Let us see. Oh, yes. Silk thread for embroidery. Yes, Miss Susan. You definitely want to try silk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't mean to go back that far. Okay. I'm going to start looking for your favorite things. Okay. You oh, Marsha has a piece of fabric that is a, is a reproduction Da Vinci print. How wonderful! Okay, you got some snow, Nikki. We were waiting for snow and sleet and the end of the world, and all we got is rain. So, <laughs> okay, let's see what you what your favorite things are. Oh, that's wonderful. Susan, Bonnie sent Susan a pink, white, and blue tailor's chalk. Fantastic. Hi, Alberta Conti. How are you? Alberta, you're in Southern Maryland. I lived in Lexington Park and then Leonardtown for 21 years. You don't get many people from Southern Maryland. People go, where? <laughs> it's like, well, it's the peninsula in Maryland that the Potomac River's on the bottom, the um, Patuxent, wait a minute, the Patuxent River on the bottom, Potomac on the top, no, Potomac River on the bottom, Patuxent River on the top of it, and the Chesapeake Bay is at the end of it. And so you're completely surrounded by water. It's pretty cool. So, but nice to see you, Alberta. And I was president of Quilters by the Bay for a while um, in Southern Maryland. I didn't know if you'd heard of them. Okay. Let's see. Uh-oh, Teresa Djukovic needs floss. 
Oh, boy, that's a good one. You know, usually Joanne Fabrics has the best sales. Oh, is Jamie here? Oh, I've got pictures of Crystal to show you. She's so cute. So Taylor's chalks are fabulous. Um, but yeah, I would go to Joanne's online, Amazon online. I don't, I don't drive in anywhere. Oh, Susan loves ink kits. They're wonderful. Uh, oh, yeah, the ink tent sticks are nice because they have little pots like you can take and um, rub them with a wet brush and actually get the paint off of them like watercolors and you can mix it in the little pots and then brush it on. So that's pretty nice, too. And I recommend if you use ink tents, try to use a textile medium or a aloe gel to thicken don't just use water if you use just water it will make them run and migrate to the point where they're not as bright they and they mess up your design so if you use them with a textile medium it works much better okay let's see who else i know i bet your crystal's favorite thing is using glitter Oh, yes, absolutely. Your frame and your long arm definitely count. And my long arm is the cheapest one that I could get that works good. <laughs> my favorite sewing machine is a Juki 600. I love it. Love it. Okay, what else do we have? What did Sonia say? Ah. Okay, let's see. Let's see what else. Ginger brand. Oh, I have a silver pair of gingers that I've had for years. They're wonderful. Oh, I should have told you another thing. A Fisker's scissor sharpener. Fisker's scissor sharpener. I can pull this out of the drawer and I can sharpen my scissors so quickly. So I always keep a sharp edge because let me tell you what, dull scissors are such a pain. And you just run it across. The blades are angled just right. You run it across either way. You keep your scissors sharp. I love that. Love, love, love that. Okay, let's see. Yes, Cheryl, um, um, the Martelli cutters are easy on your whole body, your whole body. The, the ergonomic handle makes all the difference. Okay, who else? Ah, gotcha, Vicki. Um, You're exactly right, Linda. There's nothing worse. You put green and red together, guess what you get? You get brown. You put purple and yellow together, you get brown. <laughs> That's the first lesson you realize when you start painting watercolors. Oh, I don't want the dreaded brown or gray. <laughs> so, oh, this is great. This is great. What else? Let me see. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, fusible powders are fun. I first used a fusible powder about 18 years ago. I made a, I'll have to show you this year when it comes to uh, St. Patrick's Day, because we used confetti, and she, at, the woman was so nice, she brought her fusible powder and let us each use it on our, on our little quilt we made. Yes, Laura, I'm with you. I love silk thread. Oh, I've never tried Hiroshima tulip needles. Oh, yes, the little adhesive thimbles are wonderful. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, I love this. Susan, I, I love all your, the things you enjoy, too. Okay, Sonia says she loves Kai scissors. I'll have to check into those. 
add a quarter rulers. They're great. My quilting rulers, love quilting rulers and books. Oh, are, you've got a book. It's like you have ideas and inspirations for a long time. That's wonderful. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's right. I had sharpened these little scissors right before I cut my thumb. And so be careful. That was, that was um, operator era, operator ignorance. <laughs> so, oh, how cool. Oh, yes, one of those. Pat, did you get one of those? Um, they used to, they use them, like fishermen use them to cut their line. And they slip on your finger and they have a little cutter built in. I've got one of those upstairs. So let's see. I love Ginger scissors. You're right. Okay. Imagination. Good point, Linda. You need a good imagination. You definitely do. Okay, let me see what else. Wonder clips. Oh, Michelle, are you right? I remember when I thought the hair clips were such a good idea. Now the wonder clips have them beaten. In fact, I used to have one here. I bet you I've take here it is if anybody wants to know what a wonder clip is there's a wonder clip and the prices come down a good amount but if you can't afford the ones we always see check ebay they have the knockoffs pretty cheap but uh, wonder clips are pretty wonderful okay let's see. yeah that's true Oh, nice. Uh-oh. Vicki Robles has lost her gingers somewhere along the way because she travels a lot. <laughs> but I hate that. I like, oh, is Mark here? Oh, M Mark must have walked by. Oh, too, I missed him. Um, okay. Let's see. Wonder Clips. Y'all have great ideas. Office binder clips. Yes, I have used those to hang up a quilt. Um, let me see. Mark has been really good at helping me with the computer. At first, he was too stern and it made me nervous. And I said, you've got to calm down or I'll freeze. So he's calmed down and it's been a lot easier. <laughs> Because I tend to have a fast click finger, and it's like, oh, I try this, oh, I try that, and he's like, just, just don't, don't touch it until I tell you to touch it. <laughs> K Buckley scissors, ooh, oh, Nikki, that's a great purchase. You got a whole tin can with a bunch of those clips. They are good. We're so, so lucky because back when I started quilting in 1980. Probably why I quit for about 10 years, but we had, we were told to bring cereal box cardboard. We had needles and threads and those nasty metal thimbles that made your fingers sweat and smell bad because um, they smelled metallic, you know, and just our regular scissors and a pencil. Those were our tools back then. And I, Ended up using a drafting ruler because that was even before they had a lot of quilting rulers. So we had to take and make templates out of cardboard and then you had to draw around each one. Well, you know, Deb, no wonder I put it down for 10 years because I don't have time to do Tracy Tracy around every little thing just to make a quilt. <laughs> but I tell you, I, I did put it down. I was busy. I learned how to do it, and I was happy that I learned how to do it. But I was terrible at it, number one. I am no good at, I was no good at trying to sew on a quarter of an inch, to slow down, to sew accurately. So I was terrible at it. But what I did find, and I should have realized, this was one of the hints that I was going to be an art quilter, that I could, I, okay, my quilt I had a volunteer group because I was making the costumes for the interpreters at the birthplace of Maryland, St. Mary City. So I had a volunteer group and they decided to raise money for the costume program 
by making a quilt to raffle off. They knew I was no good at accuracy on quilt making. I was used to sewing fast, getting those costumes done and on bodies. So they said, Deb, no, don't make us a block. I tell you what, why don't you make a little center block that has the dove? Now, the dove was one of the, a replica of the first ship that came over to Maryland. And I did that, and I did it great. Boy, I had the sails. I had the little strings like that were the ropes to pull the sails, all the little colors. I should have realized that was my strength, is interpreting it into an art, into a photo. So that's what I did. <laughs> oh, a dumbbell, one of those rubberized dumbbells to put on like patterns to hold them in place. That's a great idea. How do I applique? I applique by needle turning. And um, I'm trying for this heart quilt to do a machine blanket stitch. But my preference is to sit down, put it in a hoop, and do needle turn. Or even I, most of the time I don't put it in a hoop. I just hold it and do needle turn. And by doing needle turn, if you take, this is just a pin, but pretend it's a needle, and you just run that along the edge of your fabric, it will help flip that under just enough. And then you do tiny invisible stitches that you can't see. And I love that because I can sit back and, in fact, I'm going to tell you all this, and you might not appreciate it, but I love winter. As long as I don't have to leave the house, I love the long winter nights. Because I'll sew on my machine, but when it gets dark or after dinner, I'm in my comfy chair and I'm working by hand. And that's the very best time to do needlework. And, uh, but that's how I, do. I use a very fine Milner's needle and silk thread. And I use small needles, thin needles, and silk thread. And, oh my gosh, it makes you look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> I've seen people who do the English paper piecing method who I've seen people who do um, to press their, um, they cut out freezer paper templates for all the little things and then carefully glue and iron over the edges so that they're so accurate and pretty. <sighs> That's too fussy for me. I wish I, I don't have that kind of attention span. If I had to do it that way, I wouldn't do it at all. So you find what works for you. But I've seen, there was this one woman, I'm trying, Bobby was her name, nickname. She did the best applique you've ever seen. It was smooth and perfect and gorgeous. But that's what she loved. And she would take all the time to just prepare that leaf, let's say, and have it turned over on the freezer paper and put it on just, just perfectly. Then cut the little slit and pull the paper out through the back. I mean, she did it beautifully. So I ended up, one of my best things, Laura, that I got was one of the, oh boy, what are, y'all Y'all will help me. What's the name, the company name of the lamps that show daylight light? And I got this one that flips up like this and turns on, and I have it sitting beside my chair, because I started finding that just a table lamp wasn't enough. But what are those odd lights? Oh, y'all are brilliant. Thank you. I love y'all. Y'all are so good. You really helped me with this. But I have the uh, an odd flip light. Get something that's the right height to wherever your favorite place is to, to sit. Daylight odd light, or if they have other lamps that have daylight bulbs, they're wonderful. So, because otherwise, it's like, uh, <laughs> try sewing, try stitching black on black. Now, that's tough, no matter what kind of light. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I'm sorry your, free, your PC keeps freezing up. So, I have a floor odd light, too, that I got. Um, Somebody was downsizing and gave it to me. I love that thing. That's wonderful. All right. 
So we did a great job. We have talked about we have talked about um, our favorite things and given each other suggestions and ideas. So I'm going to I want to spend a moment right now showing you. Oh, gotta turn off my heater. I put slippers on today so my feet don't get so cold. And I also put long pants on, and now I'm hot. <laughs> because normally, when I'm upstairs all year round, I wear T-shirts and T-shorts. And, uh, whew, I was getting warm. Okay. I am very excited to show you what I'm working on. Let me grab this over here. Now, Mark relocated these lights. So I'm curious to see if this, oh, look at that. That is amazing. I'm going to have to tell Mark they work. Oh, this is wonderful, guys. This is wonderful. Okay. And I have a little surprise to show you that's in this. Cannot wait to show you that. Okay. And just remember, I will be downloading that new system that will allow me to do better live streams. And instead of turning the camera around to point them at my laptop to show your photos, I will be able to bring them up through the computer so we'll see them so much better. All right. Here is all of the stuff for this Valentine's quilt. I'm so excited. All right. You know that I decided to use an antique piece of linen. And I think I showed you last week that you fold it in four. So you, this was a square. And I fold it in half, then fold it in a half this way. Okay. And then I took the string, tied it to the pin. And then measured out 13 inches, held the pen. Whoops, hold on. I was doing it backwards. Whoops. Okay, so pre pretend this is a big four-sided um, or folded in fourths square or rectangle. You take your pen and you put it, put the string on it. You measure, third because I want this to be 26 inches when it's open. So you measure 13 inches, you mark it, then you hold your finger right here in the center, and you take your pen, and you do an arc across it. That way, you get a perfect circle. And so when I did that, and then I opened this out. Now, I went ahead, since it's linen, and I did a decorative, I mean, not a decorative, I did, I hem, I hem this and stitched it with a, a fabric that matches. Now, then I took a light table. Let me see where I put that. Here it is. Okay. So I put this on the light, little light table. This is not the best one. The battery's getting a little weak. And then this, if you buy the magazine or the pattern, it comes with the layout. And so I placed it under here and I lined up really good. And with this light, I can see to draw. So I went ahead and used a pencil. You can use anything you want, but you can see the design that I drew. So let me turn this off and get this out of the way. Let me get, let me get, boy, I have lots of stuff here. To, I'm so excited about this. Oh. I do, you know how I show you the good things and the bad. Um, <laughs> I took this fabric 
and I was going to make these little hearts, okay? And I wanted them in two colors. But look what I did. I, I had the shapes drawn on the steam, the, the, the fusible. I ironed it on the, the right side, which is the wrong side. I should have ironed it on the back, but I ironed it on the front. You see it? There it is. Well, that doesn't do a good job for your iron either. So I had to make all new ones. Okay. So I let me get all my little hearts lined up here. And I've decided that I'm not going to do the buttonhole stitch on these by hand. Because that's a lot of pieces. There are some the vines. Here are the um, you can still see me, I hope. And here are the centers of the flowers. Somebody asked me for this pattern, and I said, sadly, I cannot share this pattern with you online because that, that would be against the copyright rules. But you can go to McCall's and buy the copy, or you can figure it out yourself. And um, in something like this, let me show you again the photo of it. And whoops, here it is. Here are two photos of it. And so it's a 26 inch diameter, 26 inch circle. And then what I did is it shows these hearts around the outside. Well, this was done in wool. But I, I don't have wool, so I wanted to use regular cotton fabric. So I thought, well, how do I do this that, so that it will work? And what I, am do, what I did is I cut out a pink back for this. Then I cut out the fronts. Now, some of them are going to be pink. So they have already got the fusible on them. And... Then these already have fusible because I fused them together. Then I cut some extra pink so that all of these would be backed with pink. Whether they're red or pink, they'll be backed with pink. And in fact, here is one. What I did to make them a little prettier is I cut out from my scrap batting, I cut out smaller hearts. So when I go to build this, I take... One of this, and that's the fusible. The paper has been removed. Then I take um, a heart. And notice how I cut the heart smaller? Because that way, then this does not have fusible on it. I put this together like this. And then I take my iron. And sometimes they, whoops. I'm doing it out of, sometimes the edges are a little off, but I will trim that once I've ironed it. Okay, so I press it together to, to activate the fusible. Then, now if you wanted to, at this point, you could use some fray check and um, fray check the edges, but I just go around and make sure, oh, this didn't press well enough. Okay. Try to line it up. I'm trying to be quick on this, so I'm not lining it up quite as good. But then come along and trim off any of the underneath fabric if it shows. All right. In a perfect world, they would be perfect, but when you hand cut these out and you hand draw them, sometimes they're a little off. So now you take this, let me get this edge. But I wanted to use regular fabric because wool's expensive. So then I took it over here. 
to the sewing machine. And, oh, I forgot to put, let me get my top thread done. I have a, I have a uh, pink bobbin in place so that when I stitch this, whoops, I have a pink bobbin so that when I stitch this, it will, and I'm using a nice, it, this is a connecting threads um, spool and I wanted to use it because it's a little thicker because when you do um, blanket stitch, you normally did it with a thicker thread by hand. So I want to mimic the hand stitch a little. So let me get this threaded. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is put it on the blank, blanket stitch. Make sure to change your foot. Make sure to change the foot so that you don't break your needle because you're going to be doing a zigzaggy type motion. All right. And I'm doing a blanket stitch. Let me make this bigger. Okay, and then make that smaller. Whoops, not that small. Okay. All right, and I'm just going to do the blanket stitch around the outside. Make that outside stitch fall right on the edge. I wonder if, you know what? Want, let me double check, make sure my feed dogs are up. No, I think they're down. Okay. All right. And so you just do the blanket stitch around this. There's that part. All right. You know how to do that. So, okay. Here we go with this. All right. So I liked making them a little bit padded. And this way, when this is sewn on to the edge here and it shows from the other side, you'll see a finished other side. Otherwise, this would be too floppy. And if you did, because the wool, it was meant to be with wool so that when it hangs over the edge, it's okay, wool's thicker. But by doing these double sided, it works. So I'll leave this picture close by. So I'm not going to sew these on, but these are going to go every other color sewn on like that. And I'll use matching thread and just tack them into place right down here. All right. So that's all of these. And as you see, I've got quite a few to do the blanket stitch around. That's why I have all these different color threads. Let me move all this out of the way for now and show you the rest. So you, as you can see, I put a lot of work into getting them all ready. All right. Get this out of the way. Get these out of the way. All right. So what I've done is I've drawn with pencil. So I can see just where I need certain things to be. These are going to be the flower petals that... Let me okay. So these are going to be the flowers that go on the inside here. And let me show you how I'll put these in place. And to get the paper backing off the fusible, one easy way is to act like you're going to tear the fabric and it tears the paper and makes it easy to get off. So then I'm going to put, I can see with the pencil where to put this. So there goes one. And here is the other. And I'm going to press this down. Okay. So now those are down. So that's going to be the flowers right here. And when all four are pressed, well, I'll go ahead and five of them. 
Okay. So, whoops. But it really is, is not a difficult. What did, what did Susan, what did you call this again? I know, where's my pressing sheet, huh? I love taking risks, but I need to pr present the proper image. So let me get it. Put this. You just have to space these. I'm trying to look where I've drawn them. Let me get my pressing sheet. Well. Well, this will work. This will work. All right. So let me get this last bit of. Let me get the last bit off of here. Come on, Deb. All right. Let me space these correctly. And I used Jenny Beyer pattern fabric so that these flowers could look a little um, look a little different and varied and varied so they will stand out from all the other hearts okay then I'm going to lay a pressing sheet and this is I forget what this is called but it's almost like a wax paper but it's not really a wax paper so press it and there we go. Okay. So there's the flower. Now on this, I want to tuck the edge under. So I'm just going to barely put a little iron in the middle because I wanted that little bit neater. So I'm going to probably do that by hand. There's the center of the flower. Then I come out here. And that's when I start using these. The darkest little flower is going to be the center of the design, which is this one. Then, okay. I, I, you can't quite see, and I'm sorry about this. You can't quite see what I'm doing. Okay. All right, so peeling the paper off takes a little bit of time. All right. So this one, oh, okay. So this one's going to go right here. Okay, so now. Put this down. All right, then I get my lighter colors. I get my lighter colors and I put this one here because I've drawn the pattern on. But you can always, this is something that you can kind of look at and figure how you want to place it. Because here's, whoops, let me, because here is, here's what it looks like. So you can kind of figure out by looking at this. And if you would like a shortcut to the pattern online, because I did send the woman, I mean, not the pattern, but the site that has the information. If you want that, I, I have the link. So if you send me, if you send me an email at our time to quilt, at twc.com i'll send you the page where this quilt is it shows the photo and discusses a little bit of how it was made all right so now this paper is off and the last one in this section is right here all right so now let me press that one down get the extras out of the way because the worst thing is to accidentally iron down something that's not ready to be ironed down all right now what i'm going to do now that these are in place 
I'm going to then take and do hand embroidery and do a stem stitch, do different stitches, and it even some of these where the little loop comes up, which would be right here, there's a little loop and I've got to do French knots around it. Now, I noticed on this that she found little tiny heart buttons. Look at those little tiny hearts. Well, I got out my polymer clay and I made little, little tiny heart buttons. Let me show you how tiny. Little tiny heart buttons. Now, I still need to put the acrylic on them. But they are so cute. And I punched two holes in them so I can stitch them down. And I just wanted to show you that all three of these little dark flowers have three buttons on them. So there's one, two, and three. So, I know, 36. I made these tiny little heart buttons out of polymer clay, bake them, and then I'll do a little bit of acrylic over them to give them that plastic button shiny look. But I thought you might get a kick out of these because I said, where am I going to find tiny little heart buttons? I always go to my polymer clay and I make them myself. So you see how these are going to go? These will be done very last because you never put buttons on until after you've quilted the quilt. You don't want to have to worry about running over them. But isn't that cute? Little tiny buttons. All right. So I will do repeat this scene three other times around the quilt to get this. Then I need to start. I need to start doing the embroidery around here. So I'm going to turn off this light now so that I can, whoops, where is my remote? Here it is. Okay. Then I'm going to come back over here and show you this again. And I think that if you, if, I, if you need the website and you look at it, I think most of you, if you don't have the copy or can't get a copy of the McCall's Magazine, this is January, February 21, that if you go to that website and see it, you might be able to figure it out. But is this the cutest thing? I just love this. So, and this, this quilt was designed and made by Joe Morey. M-O-U-R-Y. Beautiful, beautiful work, Miss Jo. Beautiful work. All right. And let me see if I can show you these buttons, if, it, if they'll show up a little bit better away from that other light. But I just made, whoops, let me try it again. Just made little hearts. Put two little holes in each one. I made them as small as I could try to carefully work. There are my buttons. Oh, thank you, Susan. Okay, people. So now, is anybody in this group, are they working on this quilt? Anybody here working on this quilt? Tell me if you're... If you are working on this quilt, you don't have to, only if you wanted to. But I was just curious if anybody is. Anybody working on this quilt? Oh, and Miss Marsha, I hope you're still here. The gingerbread man made its way back to me. I didn't have enough postage. Susan said it's on her list, okay? Anybody else making this cute quilt? This table. 
what did what did Susan call it again now? Table topper. Thank you, Miss Susan. So anybody else making this table topper? Last call for anybody who's making this table topper. Okay, it looks like the closest I have to someone actually making this is Miss Susan. So Miss Susan, you are the winner of 27 little baby heart buttons. I'm gonna make you, I've got, I made more than I needed and I'll need to make a few more, but I'm going to send you I am going to send you the 27 baby heart buttons to make this quilt. So, because they're so much fun and it was so easy. So, very good. Very, very good. So, I'm excited. All right. Yeah, when I, when I was making them and kept making them, I said, oh, a giveaway time. <laughs> so, if somebody else can prove they're making it, I'll make you some buttons too. Okay? All right. Well, now I'll put this away, and it is time. Um, oh, I just wanted to show you. I pulled out a bunch of flosses to do the hand embroidery that we're going to do on them. And I love the way that the designer of it used a variegated floss. So I'm going to take several different colors of green, put one piece each together until I have three or four strands, and then I'll do my embroidery and I have my favorite loop hoop this is supposed to be one of my favorite things too I think I forgot but I love a good old wooden hoop can't beat them I can quilt with this and I can do embroidery work with this love it do repair work if you will need to repair a part of a quilt put it in the hoop all right so let's go look at your photos okay guys Okay. Woo. Okay. Here we go. Whoops. All right, Susan, I will get those to you this. I'll get them out in the mail this week. You know how the mail goes. <laughs> um. Oh, and I'll need to probably get your work address to send the mail to. But anyway, I wanted to say that for Diana Wright, I've got something coming to you. Marsha, I've got something coming to you. I've just got to put the right postage on it. There's Cheryl. She's back. All right, let's get... Oops, come on. Oh, hold on. All right, let's see. Okay. Here we go. I just wanted to show, here's Miss Alexis. Let me see. I'm not sure. I think I have to turn off the light. So let, I'll be right back, guys. Hold on. Okay, I'm hoping this is going to be the last week that I have to do this. That hopefully by next week we'll be able to show these photos so easily. But here's Miss Alexis's beautiful work. Okay. Look at all of those French knots she made. That's a lot of French knots. Way to go, Miss Alexis. Beautiful, beautiful. In fact, let me see. I might be able to bring this up bigger so you can see those French knots. That's a lot. And then beadwork and then embroidery work. Way to go. Okay. And then she got some new fabrics for Christmas. So they are going to be wonderful for her embroidery work. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So now, let me go to Miss B's. 
And I'm so excited because, whoops, I didn't want to show you this one first. Hold on. Let me show you this one first. Oh, okay. I didn't get a phone call, so evidently we're still there. Good. Okay. <laughs> Miss B is working on a brand new landscape. And isn't this beautiful? I mean, she chose fabrics that look like watercolor paintings. That's beautiful. She's got an eye. She's a very talented lady, Miss B. Okay. Now I'll go back and show you the later version. She's been busy doing some embroidery work. And just beautiful. It's amazing what the embroidery work does to bring out the textures, the things in the land. It's just beautiful. So way to go. Look at the edge of the water, the sand. I mean, beautiful work. Thank you, Miss B. All right, now we're going to go back. But I can't wait. This new live streaming system should really improve the photos. This is from Miss Bonnie. And she did one of the raceway quilts where you use a jelly roll and it goes together very fast. But I love the eclectic nature of it. So way to go, Miss Bonnie. All right, her next photo. She got her first UFO of this year. And I think it's fabulous. Way to go, Miss Bonnie. Miss Bonnie doesn't know how to sit still. She's a busy lady. Okay, then let's go to Cheryl's. Cheryl has been busy, sent some wonderful photos. Look at this gorgeous pen cushion Miss Cheryl made. And I love the bee charm on it. That is fabulous. Isn't that sweet? Miss Cheryl's so talented. And then here is the quilt she's been working on. Beautiful embellished landscape and part pieced. I mean, it's just beautiful. And here are some more of her pen cushions. I love them. Love them. Look at the little boot. And then the two flower pen cushions. They, I guess it's a flower in a flower pot. Very nice. Thank you, Miss Cheryl. Okay. I've got a few pictures to show y'all this week. Believe it or not, I found out how to download pictures from my phone. This is me taking a nap in the sun with new Maisie dog that we adopted. So, oh, let me tell you, that was the best nap I've had in ages. Mark came in, saw us sleeping, and decided to snap a picture. Love naps. Naps in the sun. Then here is the New Year's dinner meal Mark made. And it was a standing rib roast and wild rice mix and asparagus. And that was very good because you remember on New Year's Day, I was sewing on a mystery quilt all day. Whoops. Okay. This is when I do my live stream. Crom whoops, that's way too big. Crommy lays under my desk. And he has a mat and a blanket, and he lays under the desk while I'm doing this live stream. And I thought I would show you what that looks like. He's, such a, he's so devoted, and he absolutely loves our time down here. Then here is me sitting with little Maisie. This is... Not long after we got her, when she was still very shy about me. And there's another one of Miss Maisie. This is a scene I saw it came, popped up on my laptop. And I thought, you know, we can get mountain scenes from just about anywhere. This is my grandson, Evan, peeling potatoes. I love that my daughter teaches both of her children to be independent and very capable. And he do, he's done a great job. He's peeled a lot of potatoes. 
then here is my daughter, and she's on her big sectional sofa and watching TV with my grandchildren, my granddaughter Charlotte and grandson Evan. I love her home. It's so warm and pretty. Love it. This was that broderie purse um, quilt that I showed you last year from 1840. Beautiful. And see how they took the, cut out the chintz flowers and then applique them onto a less expensive fabric to make a beautiful bedspread. Okay, uh, we've been talking about we've been talking about shingles. This was when I got shingles about five or six years ago, and this is not the worst picture. So I'm giving you a little warning. Here's my granddaughter Charlotte. She got her hair dyed. I think it's so pretty. This is my daughter, Becky. This was a sweater she's knitting. And now you can see why I can't knit. That's just too many things to use right there. <laughs> that looks so complicated to me. Becky sent me a picture this morning of her breakfast. It looks like French toast or pancakes with bananas and blueberries in the syrup. That looks delicious. Then this is my granddaughter's hair after she had it dyed. It's faded a good bit, but I tell you what, it was awfully pretty. That is a brilliant red. Then this is my daughter Becky's poodle, Polly. Love our Polly. Pat has a poodle very similar. I thought this was a really good quote, so I wanted to share this with you. You know when I tell us to always take care of ourselves. But this is a really good way to keep yourself healthy and happy. And I love that. Sometimes it's really good to read things like that to kind of keep you centered. Here's Polly. Becky said, Polly did not want to get out of bed and it was hard for her. Polly makes it so comfortable. Here is my eye when I had the shingles so please when i tell you to get your shingle shot i know of what i speak that was pretty bad then my other my daughter katie has a new puppy coming and he is absolutely precious they a few months ago they lost their dog elmer who was the sweetest dog in the whole world so now they've this they look found this puppy from a rescue and they should be getting him in about two weeks he's so cute here's another picture of polly i love miss polly here's my daughter when she went to visit him when he was just four weeks old and he is a cutie that's my daughter katie who lives up in maryland and this puppy with the red collar that's her puppy as you can see he's the biggest in the litter i told her maybe tank would be a good name for him then this is my daughter katie's sheep so they're sheep and goats they're expecting sleet and snow so she brought him into the barn now as my daughter katie they did get snow this morning so she was out in it at first Okay, then this is her other dog, Buford, who's asleep on the blankie. He really missed it when his brother died. And this is her chickens. They're out in the snow. I said, ah, chicken popsicles. There we go. And then here she is with some of her sheep. Okay, and here's an outdoor picture from her, the snow her bird feeder. All right. I think that's all of my pictures today. But I finally had a chance to download my pictures. That was nice. Okay, Deborah Donnell. Okay, I know that she's not feeling well right now, so we'll go ahead and show her as for her. Very talented lady. I love this. I want to do this at some point on our Art Quilt Thursdays. That's gorgeous, like a collage animal with bright prints. Here's Miss Deb pushing through a big quilt through her domestic. 
But right now, poor thing, she's having problems with her spine and her shoulders. And, you know, women, we work hard, and our shoulders usually will act up pretty good. So I'm sorry about that. We hope she will feel better very soon. Because she's a busy lady. She likes to stay busy and quilt. Here is a beautiful quilt of hers. I love the 3D effect coming off the quilt with the fabrics and the flowers. And I love that you can turn that quilt into whatever you want. That is your, that is your special place, your work. It's wonderful. Whoops. Let me shrink it down. Okay. I think that's it for Miss Deborah Dunnell's. So now let's go to Miss Dolores. Oh my goodness. I finally got these off of when I finally got my program done last night. I was able to download these. They are gorgeous. I got them off our group site. She does animal portraits out of out of thread painting and it her work is exquisite just beautiful Dolores I tell you what wouldn't it be great if she could share some tips with us whoops nope try it again this is a quilt she told me the backstory for this quilt and I'm trying to remember the name of it I will I will find out before we leave this this is a close-up of a quilt she was given the wrong medication and it caused her to go into a deep depression. And while they were trying to fix the medication problem, she started working on this quilt. And so she went through the deepest part of the depression and then slowly started coming out of it while working on this. And she said it was so good for her and will always be a special quilt for this of that time. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? And I love how her butterflies go off the edge. That is a wonderful. I love the little girl touching the caterpillar that will become a butterfly. Just beautiful. It's called Everyday Miracles. Everyday Miracles is the name of that quilt. And it was part of a Hoffman Challenge in one third place. So fantastic. Dolores, fantastic. I can't imagine winning, actually winning something with a quilt. But this has got her heart and soul in it. Look at her irises. She has an iris. Oh, and that's a frog. She has an iris garden and a daylily garden. That's absolutely beautiful, Miss Dolores. Wow. And then here is a Sheltie portrait. Look at that. Mm. such beautiful work. And then this was another customer portrait of a pug. And that is also adorable. Okay. And then look at this. Looks like a little Shizu or something. What a cute puppy. This dog's name Zoe. I love the collar, how she did that collar. And I wondered, was that embroidered or what? Or was it a real metal collar? Maybe. Maybe that's what it was tucked onto the work. Because that's beautiful. Isn't that amazing? Her eyes, the eyes she does on these animals are fantastic. So I think that was the last one. Very good work. Thank you so much, Dolores. Okay. Now let's see. Miss Diana, since she's, she's doing a edit a sitar block of the month too, her and Nadine are both working on the same one. And so they're doing it in large and in small. Okay. Whoops. I went too quick one time too many. Here is her snowflake quilt she was quilting. And her quilting is just so gorgeous. Just so beautiful. All right. Now, whoops. Wait a minute. It won't let me go to the next one until I return it to the right size. Okay. And here's some more of her houses. 
then this is a beautiful center star of a quilt she's making. I think that is gorgeous. Just beautiful. Way to go, Miss Diana. All right. This is a basket, a Civil War, I think, era reproduction basket of flowers. I think, is that it? Yep, that, wait a minute, no, not quite. Here's two more, a couple more. All right, let's make this bigger. Beautiful snowflake quilt, our table runner. Beautiful. I would love to know how she did the white snowflakes. Okay, come on. Maybe that was, for whatever reason, they're not coming up. Oh, here, here is her K. England Civil War quilt that she's been working on, that basket of flowers and things. Here are some of her other blocks. Just beautiful, beautiful. Oops. Okay. Thank you, Miss Diana, so much. Okay, let's see. Who do we have now? All right, now we're going to Miss Jamie's. You remember last week I showed her beautiful quilt that she had recently done hanging up on her rail. And I love a picture from Crystal hanging on the wall too. That way both, both mother and daughter's artwork is displayed. I love it. And here's her craft table. She does so much crafting with her daughter Crystal, which is just wonderful. Isn't that fun to have a child you can share the excitement of your love of crafting? And what a good thing it is. My, my children are, were never bored because there was so much crafting to do. And she is doing that same thing with her lovely daughter. Oops. She was so glad that she can work with the delicate things now that Crystal's old enough to be gentle and careful. Look at these beautiful decorations they made. Beautiful. And look at the windowscape with the heart and the little hearts coming down and the lights. Just magical. I love when things are made magical. Life is magical. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful tablescape. <clears throat> and the baby, oh, now I've forgotten his name. But isn't that sweet? And then crystal hearts. I mean, the glitter hearts that Crystal made. Oh, I didn't know I still had that one in there. Okay, so way to go, Jamie and Miss Crystal. I hope Crystal hears us say her name. We love having Crystal as our youngest fan. And here, you know I have to leave this one in, Miss Jody. I'm still in awe of this. Let me see. Well, I can't get it to go forward, so I'll come down here. Miss Jody has recently started on another art quilt, and it is amazing. I love how she does this. She's told me how she does it, and I'm still, though, in awe. She's nicknamed this Frankie. Look at this. Isn't this incredible? She's been working on getting the hair into place. And to me, this is so powerful. There is a sad melancholy to this character that is just so touching. It's palpable. And she, is, she has brought that to life with fabric. So. I'm so impressed. Thank you, Miss Jody. So, so impressed. See what art, I mean, fabric, people don't think of fabric as an art, an artist canvas, but it is. And it's amazing. This is Michelle's. Uh oh. Well, some of these might not want to open for me. I'm sorry. So, Oh, no. Okay, here we go. At least I can get two open, I think. Let me see. Will this go back? Oh, I love this meme. 
That is so funny. Your husband at the quilt shop. Poor Bernie. Everybody used him as a meme. Oh, good. They are opening up. Okay, because last week I accidentally tucked them into somebody else's folder. So look at this. This is a new quilt Miss Michelle's doing, Spools. I love it. And this is her Home for COVID quilt. Just love it. Okay. Thank you, Miss Michelle. All right, where else now? Where? Whoops. Miss Nadine. Let's see what Miss Nadine. Okay, here we go. She's also working on the Edita Sitar winter quilt, a block of the month. Beautiful. I tell you what, I'm so impressed with the fabrics that Miss Sitar designs. They are amazing. So pretty. Yep, here it is. Winter Village. Just beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, whoops, no, I'm sorry. See, it'll be nice when I have that new live streaming software and I will be able to show you much more. These are oh, just a little bit more snow. I love that, Oberhof in Germany. Okay, now I'll go back and... We saw these last week. I'll show you them really quickly. Great quilts from Sue Smith. Not our Susan Smith. We have also have a Sue Smith. So they are wonderful. Thank you, Miss Sue. Please send, feel free to send me your photos. We love your photos. We love seeing what you do. Miss Pat has a couple new things she's working on. She's starting off the new year, right? Look at that. Isn't that cute? Just love it. Okay, then. Oh, I love this. This is a Valentine's table runner. <laughs> this is the whole table runner. I love that. I'm laughing because I can't, couldn't figure out what to call my Valentine's thing. And this is actually a runner. Beautiful. Way to go, Miss Pat. Okay. I think we're just about done. Let me see. What else? Um, Miss Cheryl, I don't think we have anything new for Miss Cheryl, but I know she's working on something, so don't worry. We will see the, something from her very soon. Miss Susan put up a nine patch that she's working on, so we know Miss Susan's staying busy. Uh, I don't know how she gets everything done that she gets done. So very good, Miss Susan. Wonderful. All right, I think that's it for this week's photos. But please feel free to send your photos to me at our time to quilt at twc.com. And we would love to put them up and show people what you can do. So let me come back to y'all. There we are. Oh, you started the floor yesterday. That's wonderful. I have so many. I have so many UFOs. Who wants to start a UFO group? Because I need some inspiration to get these UFOs done. I said, you know, my legacy is right, right now is she thought of a lot of things. She just didn't finish anything. So we're going to work. Let's work on our UFOs. Send me your photos, and I will gladly put them up. Hopefully next week, I'll have the new live stream software program. So it should be much easier. The picture is much clearer, larger. should be wonderful. Any other, anything to say? Any questions you have? Yeah, this is our show and tell. I never thought that's exactly what it is. Oh, that's wonderful, Susan. Wonderful. Because you know what? There's this feeling of satisfaction when you finish something. And I have, I probably have 50 things that I've started, never finished, or never started at all, but I've got it sitting there waiting. So we will work on that. How about a sampler quilt? Oh, 
That's nice. That's very nice. Oh, Laura got her COVID shot. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Laura. Please get your COVID vaccination. I can't wait to get mine. It's the, it's the one time in the last 10 years that I wished I were older because I'm only a few months shy of the 65 cutoff that we're at now. And I can't wait to get my COVID shot. I told my son, I haven't even met my five-month-old grandson yet. And I said, as soon as I get my second, two weeks after my second shot, I'm going to call you up and say, ready for company? So, Bonnie, uh, you know what? She's, Bonnie is so organized. Oh, thank you, Miss Robles. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. So, any other questions or any, if anyone needs the pattern, for the Art Quilt Thursday landscape, please send me an email at our time to quilt at twc.com and I will be glad to shoot it right out because I had a little trouble. I was down, my email was down for a couple of days, but I'm back to it. So I just want to thank you for sharing Sundays with me. You don't know what you mean to me. You keep me excited and interested. I love sharing this time with you. I'm honored that you want to share this time with me. So don't forget Thursday nights at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We do Art Quilt Thursdays. And then every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern, we do the live streams. So, oh, a nine patch a day? Oh, that'd be, that's just one more thing out of my ever-growing list, wouldn't it be? But thank you so much. Take good care of yourself. Get your vaccination. Get a shingle shot if you haven't had one and you're 60 and older. Get that shot. All right, everybody. Stay warm. Stay safe, as Jody says. Jody, keep sending us pictures of your gorgeous work on. I love it, love it, love it. Well, thank you, everybody. Miss Crystal, you're the best. Keep working, Miss Crystal. We love all the, the art you make. And Jamie, what a good mom. I love seeing good parenting. Nothing warms my heart up like a good, loving mom. So way to go. Okay, guys, it was wonderful to see you. Um, if anybody has been here twice to, to watch our show and would like to join our group, send me an email and I'll shoot you an invitation. Okay? Thank you, and as always, thank you, Miss Susan Smith, for all you do to make this possible. You keep everything flowing smoothly and organized, and I love you to bits, girlfriend. Take good care. Stay warm. And if it's snowing where you are, mail me some. <laughs> I want snow. All right. Take good care. You are the best. Take good care of yourself. Okay, everybody? Mwah. Bye-bye, guys. You're the best. <laughs>